Cool. Well, I think um, we've got some folks in, so why don't we go ahead and get started with our um, Cropster webinar, where we're going to really talk about um, simplifying direct sourcing and how technology can do that. And I'm so happy to be here today with um, Luisa from El Grano and Hannes from Coffee Circle. Yes. And I would love um, just to take a moment to do some introductions. So I'll be kind of a host moderator participant. And I'm Marcus Young with Cropster, um, based in the US. Um, and really my responsibilities here are all around education and this sort of communication outreach. So I, I really love um, having these conversations and learning so much from, from the partners that we bring in. So Hannes, do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself and just briefly your background? Yeah, sure. First of all, yeah, thanks for the invitation and nice to meet you. My name is um, Hannes Fenrich. I'm from Coffee Circle. Coffee Circle is a Berlin-based roastery, but uh, the fact, yeah, and I'm working with uh, Coffee Circle for eight years. I'm at the head of coffees there. So I'm roasting, I'm in charge of the sourcing. And um, yeah, Coffee Circle is uh, almost 10 years old. So um, we're based in Berlin, but we're actually a B2, like a, a direct uh, consumer coffee brand. So the rich uh, Berlin, has in the past not been so important, but since a year, we also have um, three coffee shops in Berlin. Uh, so if you're in Berlin, uh, welcome. Uh, we, you're very welcome to visit our coffee shops, which are very beautiful and new. And yeah, I'm telling more about Coffee Circle and our sourcing in a, in a bit. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait to, to hear more. And Luisa, tell us a little bit about your background and what brings you to coffee and just a, a bit about what El Grano is. Okay, thanks Marcus and thanks Hannes as well. Uh, so I'm original, I'm original from Brazil. So I started working in coffee like six years ago as a barista uh, with Felipe Croci, which is a farmer that's pretty well known in the US, I think from Fazenda Mental Fortaleza. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to the UK back, well, back at the time in Brazil, I was a journalist. So I'm, today I'm involved in content for, for El Grano and that's kind of like the link. But I started uh, in coffee in Brazil, moved to the UK, still barista, then started roasting, had uh, like roasting assistants in a, in a company in uh, Manchester called uh, Ancoats Coffee, and then had a brief period as a uh, head roaster until I moved uh, to El Grano, where I worked in sourcing, in operations, and then I moved uh, to content, kind of like combining the two the two things that, that I've been doing. And Algrano is uh, this digital coffee, green coffee sourcing uh, ecosystem uh, that was founded in 2015 by three Swiss university friends. And we have a, a marketplace where roasters can find offers that are made by coffee producers in countries in Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And they can also build relationships, uh, like long-term relationships with uh, full price transparency and visibility of shipping dates, et cetera. Oh, very cool. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, um, to see some of those, those screen grabs from the platform that you shared with us and also to hear the conversation with how Hannes and uh, Melgrano work together and of course, Cropster is also a piece that ties everything together with all of the tools that we provide for producers um, at Origin. And you know, specifically in this session today, where our focus is on roasting companies, how we have tools for managing samples and green inventory and communicating back with supply networks as well. So I think it's going to be a really, really great topic exploring the intersection of, of technology and sourcing. Um, those of you that are joining us on the session today, um, if you have questions, if things come to mind that you want to, us to explore a little bit deeper, please use the Q&A feature of our, of our platform here. Um, you can type your questions in there and I will be monitoring those along with, um, with my colleague who's here and we will do our best to answer those either during the presentation or, um, or at the end when we have a little time for Q&A. And so our agenda today is we're going to talk a little bit about what is direct trade and what is direct sourcing. 
And I'm really excited to kind of put those out of the, the realm of theory and into the practical and hear from Hannes about really what are the sourcing philosophies of Coffee Circle, um, what steps do they take to sort of make sure that those philosophies are attained, and how do technology solutions um, like those um, offered by Algrano and Cropster help a roaster like Coffee Circle really to do their job and to deliver on their commitments. And so, you know, I guess to start this discussion, it's like, you know, we've, we've had this term, it's a term that's become very popular over the last decade called direct trade. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm just always interested to hear, like, Louisa, when you hear direct trade, what comes to mind for you? Counterculture. I think that's <laughs> that comes to my mind. <laughs> so some of these iconic roasting companies, yeah, I think when I think of roasting companies, I think, yeah, there's kind of counterculture, Stumptown and Intelligentsia, right? They're... Yeah, they, they, exactly. <laughs> so they kind of like came up with it, was it like the early 2000s? And even though it's a concept that's been out there for more than 20 years or uh, there's still no consensus. So it's, it's one of those tricky. It is, yeah. Um, and Hannes, how about you when you hear like direct trade or when you think about that in practice, what does it mean for um, you? Yeah, I mean, it's still like, it's uh, still a term that people use not that much anymore. I think it became a bit more unfashionable because it's actually too unprecise. Like uh, okay. that is basically what everyone has discovered over the past years and in, in, in conversations, discussions. Generally, I mean, you need a term for your end customers to uh, show what makes you different. And uh, that's why still direct trade is still until today, most popular, most popular word. What's, that's why it's still used. It has, you know, it has this point, but it's a bit too un unprecise for me. Yeah, I agree. You know, it, and maybe part of it for me comes from that word trade, which, you know, it, it just implies it's sort of this like financial relationship. Um, and that's not even a relationship. It's just like transactional, right? Sure. It's like, oh, we're just engaging in trade. We're going to talk about price. We're going to get this done. And then we move on. Um, but I think, you know, the job of, of somebody who sources coffee is actually much more complex than that. And the financial piece, while important, is kind of the tip of the iceberg. So, you know, we've sort of presented this as direct sourcing instead, um, which you know, I think, as you said, it, direct trade might be imprecise. Maybe direct sourcing is a little bit more accurate of your model. Yeah, um, yeah because I think you know, to me, and and you know, we even already use this word. It's this idea of relationships. I'm gonna it's, I'm gonna jump in here, Marcus, because I think yeah, like, Louisa, please. Direct sourcing is something that we've been use we've been using a lot as a uh, like the terminology that we choose to use our grano, um, and it's not even like direct trade is it's a complicated term. I agree. I think it was the Daily Coffee News that said he was dead in two thousand and seventeen, and we're here still. So still today, we're we're still talking about it. Um, but yeah, I think it in my it, it's a bit of a strict uh, definition. I think as well. So. So they very good principles, very good ideas behind it, but it implies a direct uh, transaction. And that's why, because what we do on our grano is that we, we say we facilitate direct relationships, we facilitate direct sourcing, because roasters can source directly from producers, but the, transactional, uh, the, the financial transaction is intermediated by a third party, which is us. That is, is we, can, we have to do that so we can uh, import coffees on behalf of the roasters and bring them to Europe so we can pay for those coffees in advance, etc. And if we can't do that, uh, then th we can't do, uh, we can't bring coffee for the majority of the roasters that we, that we work with because people can't contract big volumes a lot of the time. Like I know Hannes can, uh, the coffee circle has the infrastructure and the demand to uh, buy full containers, but the majority of the work, the roasters that we work with, they're buying anything from like 10 bags to 50 bags or 50 bags to 150 bags. Uh, so in order to, to do that, there has to be a third party uh, in between. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. In addition to that, even I would say, uh, like the big benefit of uh, you guys is not only the financial aspect, but it's also like dealing with the logistics, etc. You know, because otherwise, even we wouldn't be able that uh, just one person is basically can still handle the whole sourcing. But uh, I would need to book containers, follow up about that, and especially in these days, I, I'm very happy that I don't have to deal with this on a daily basis because it's. <laughs> You know like very complicated uh, these days so uh, that's also a big advantage the advantage um, yeah absolutely and i think it's we'll, we'll dive into some of those topics it's not just the financial but it's logistics it's quality it's all of these and um and you know where, where i think really the the technology piece comes in it's like this quote that i just kind of we developed as we were talking about this in planning it's this idea that with technology everyone has the right tools to do what they do best. So roasters can focus on relationships and sourcing for their business model, while others like El Grano um, can focus their expertise on the logistics and the more technical details. Um, that as a, as a living, breathing, working roaster, you don't have time for. Yeah, and I'd say like, we do the boring stuff, like the paperwork, and then the roasters can do the fun bit, which is like cupping coffee. Uh, talking to farmers and all that kind of stuff. But in talking to people, because um, we talk to roasters all the time and we're always talking to people to uh, further develop the features on the platform and improve uh, the interface. Uh, so the main barriers that roasters will have for uh, to source direct are obviously the, uh, the logistics part, so all like the book and the containers and the documentation, uh, finding suppliers that they can trust. I think that's a big, um, that's a big issue. It's like, so how do you know that this farmer will deliver you a bag of clean coffee instead of a bag of potatoes or a bag of beans or, or whatever? And then the quality, the quality risk as well. So making sure that the coffee arrives the way they should arrive and doesn't sit in a container for two months uh, under the sun and that kind of stuff. And right. so our Grano has the digital uh, interface that helps with like all the planning, all the uh, communication with producers and the planning of your sourcing needs. And then we also have this like operational uh, back end that takes care of those those pain points. So like the logistics, uh, the quality risk and how you can find good suppliers. Right. Yeah, I, lo I love that. And then Cropster, I think, really comes in for roasters with the strength of once that coffee is in their hands, we have tools to also ease those pain points and to move from a series of complicated spreadsheets and file cabinets full of documentation to one repository where everything from samples to green inventory to roast profiles to cupping um, can be housed and, and can be searched and archived and you can look back at coffees year after year, decade after decade, even now that we're, um, we're approaching that milestone. That's great. Well, kind of out of the theoretical, um, Hannes, why don't you talk just a little bit about Coffee Circle and your sourcing philosophy? This, this slide is just some info I pulled from your website, but it's always Thanks, nice to yeah. hear in your own words. <clears throat> Yeah, as I said earlier, we're uh, like almost like we're more or less 10 years old. Maybe it's, it's this year, actually, the anniversary. And um, uh, ever since we buy coffees from Ethiopia, in the, in the first year, actually, we started only buying Ethiopian coffees. It was the idea, you see Martin on the picture here and on a visit in Ethiopia to import green coffee coffee from Ethiopia, bring it to Germany, roast it there, sell it to end consumers online. That was uh, pretty new at that, uh, that time. And also the consumer automatically pays one euro uh, as a donation when he buys a, bag, a kilo of roasted coffee. And that uh, euro is invest reinvested in, in origins, so in the beginning in Ethiopia. Uh, over the years, we also added uh, further origins to our yeah, total uh, portfolio. Um, I think we see some data later um, after Colombia, uh, after Ethiopia, Colombia, and now Brazil are the, the other big origins. And um, we have uh, yeah, increased the volume quite a bit over the years. So I think in the first year it was maybe 100 bags or something we bought. Now it's almost close to 20 containers. Um, and yeah, we buy, uh, so roast them in Berlin, then we um, send them out to customers. And uh, with the money that we make, we also like have um, more than almost more than two and a half millions reinvested in origins. 
Uh, we set up uh, washing stations there. We have a very big wash uh, water and health and sanitation program with the uh, um, German action running in Ethiopia. We have smaller project also in Congo and Kenya. And when it comes to sourcing, what we're talking about, we try to be like uh, as close as possible to the producer um, and do the, have uh, different types of relationships. And we have uh, came up over the years with a different um, sourcing philosophy or criterias. And so for all, all the coffees that we buy are traceable. We want to um, have most uh, as much as personal relationship as possible with sourcing high quality and uh, we're trying to pay for fair purchase price. Um, we can discuss about that even further, of course. Uh, then we have projects in origin. We try to source as much as possible from sustainable uh, cultivations, be it organic certified or not. And uh, yeah, I think the last point is very important that um, we always strive to improve our criteria and be closer to, to origin, et cetera. And I mean, you have yeah, situations like Corona where you can't be there, et cetera. So you have to be also like constantly working on the criteria, um, but it's still a very good guideline, uh, specifically also when we add a new origin. So that's a good starting point where we can actually make this kind of um, um, connections uh, to new growers. I mean, uh, Gano hasn't been out there like uh, that long now. It's like you added lots of origins also over the years. So I think it's all already a great starting point if you want to dig into new origins. So here you see um, the, the spread of origins that we had in the last year. So still Ethiopia is 40%, the majority of our coffees, then Colombia and Brazil. And then we have a few other countries uh, and not in all of them actually, like we have the full um, container volume that we buy. So sometimes we also do consolidated shipments or we do also buy in a few cases bought coffees if it doesn't make sense to fill containers or <clears throat> buy uh, on the ground. Uh, yeah, last year I also checked, we set up a 58 uh, green coffee contracts and uh, have a different uh, paid, um, the average FOB price was 271 we paid. Um, yeah, that's more or less about uh, what I have to say here. No, that's, I mean, that, that's a lot. That's a lot that, of commitment that you're making and this idea of continually improving and continuing to build relationships. I mean, that's, that's not easy. And I know, um, you know as a B Corp, right, you're actually being oh. assessed on continuous improvement and assessed on these things. We can talk about that a little bit more later. Yeah. But I, I'm interested to hear from, you know, Louisa, and we have some, some grabs here from the Algrano platform about you know, how a tool like Algrano and your direct relationships and sourcing model helps to helps to facilitate some of those goals for a roaster like Hannes. No, I think it's uh, it's really cool to hear Hannes uh, talking about it because um, he shows a little bit of the potential of sourcing directly. So like, I think the, the end goal that most roasters should have is to have like this kind of like partnership with producers where they can collaborate long term, they can uh, invest on the farms and they can uh, make so, uh, like harvesting decisions together. So I think that's really cool. And like they can pre-contract, they can uh, like plan their, their what they're going to buy from each producer and give producers more security and stability uh, in advance as well, which is really important. Um, but what Grano tries to do, if you can just go back quickly mark as well sure I'll sure try to be quick <laughs> we try to help people plan so instead of having like this uh, generic or this static uh, harvest calendar we thought it would be useful for people if we gave them uh, sales windows and shipping dates so they can see when producers or different origins or different specific producers they'll have samples of the fresh available to order and what are the um the shipments that are available so we do is like we talk to producers uh, multiple times in the year to like to plan so when can you send some when can you ship coffees uh, what's what are the better dates for you we kind of like make a plan with all of them kind of together like multiple producers that can ship together who can consolidate and we try to we put down a, on a sourcing planner for for roasters they can see it by origin they can see it by specific contract uh, they can create a, like a sourcing planner like that for a blend that they're working with or a big wholesale customer. Uh, so it gives them the, 
the opportunity to plan for the year, which when you're sourcing directly because your coffee is too in origin, it will take at least three months to arrive. You need to do that. So it's not like buying coffee spots, not like it's, you're not going to have coffee next week. So you need to have a good, like a good sounding plan. Uh, okay, so you can move to the next slide if you want. And yeah, so, and we have like all, we have a bunch of features uh, to help uh, like with matchmaking and, and planning. So like my interest is kind of like your saved searches. Uh, so it can help you uh, feed your calendar with uh, the key dates for the uh, coffees or the shipments that you, that you want to follow. It gives you like uh, email notifications so you can be reminded of your deadline. So for example, this coffee is only available to order for another two weeks or another three weeks. So make sure that you order now, uh, otherwise it's gonna be uh, it's not going to be available anymore. If, if you're a producer on the platform, Louisa, do do you get an indication of how many people have indicated at least an interest in your coffee yeah. at this point? So all the or... producers can see who ordered samples, uh, okay. and they can, they can also immediately immediately get in touch with roasters. So roasters can they tick a box to say it's like, oh, I allow producers to get in touch with me, um, but they can send a message to a roaster, which is a potential. A potential client says like, oh, saw that you ordered a sample of my coffee. That's really cool. What did you think? And roasters can also uh, send feedback on those samples. So it's, that's kind of like our relation, relationship management uh, tools. And it's kind of like they can start communication and that helps to get like producers mot motivated as well. They're, they're engaging with roasters, roasters are replying. And that also, that's very important for the uh, for the sales process, but we have we have a lot of other features as well. Marcus, if you give okay, I can talk about more of them, or if not, we can we can move on. Yeah, no, I mean, I I just think this is such a cool feature because you know it's like the the opacity when you're sitting in the seat of a producer. I mean, having lived and worked with farmers in Rwanda for a number of years, I know it's like they're putting forth all the effort not really knowing who their coffee is going to or where it's going. Maybe they have a buyer lined up as an importer, but I can imagine like the motivational element of being able to check in on like a producer dashboard and see what's happening. Um, I know, of course, these are, are all topics that we'll cover in part two, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, and we're also redesigning the dashboard for producers and we're going to start providing them a lot more data on their buying markets, et cetera. So uh, that's going to be really cool. I'm very excited about that. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I think uh, the other thing that there is a big pain point, I think that, that Grano tries to solve is this kind of like the quality assurance and the quality risk side of things. So if you see here, kind of like have uh, the, the, just a little bit of a, of a contract and the approval terms. So like if you, the, you, you can always approve uh, your contract the quality of the coffee if the quality of the coffee is not uh is not your matching your expectations we kind of like help by uh, help you solve it help you like negotiate a price or cancel the contract give you another option so there's always kind of like um, ways to discuss uh, quality problems and ways to solve quality problems but that being said that's very rare and we always we're cupping the coffees like all the time as well so uh, offer sample PSS, landed sample, etc. So usually, like quality problems don't really get to the roasters. I don't know if Hannes can confirm that, uh, but if there is something, we can. We're always there to help as well, and that makes uh, the sourcing a lot more relaxed, I guess. Uh, maybe one anecdote I can tell here uh, to the relationship we have uh, on the other slide, we saw Alessandro from APAS. So we're working due to uh, Algano also with uh, APAS together. And one specific thing that we created together with APAS or they created for us was very nice actually that over the years, like uh, I, after gi uh, giving back feedback about the uh, blend that they also specifically then designed, Ademilson designed a blend for us so that and in addition to their um, regular quality we also designed a superior uh, type of blend and and that is something that is really cool like was basically facilitated to this direct relationship over the years back and forth feedback etc um, uh, which is very nice now they they create one one a specific blender for us <clears throat> and one thing that i also really like is the email uh, notification when the shipment is afloat 
So sometimes you really need to follow up. And then uh, when do you expect that a shipment comes? Automatically, I receive from Algarna always an email. Your coffee is afloat. So that's already very good or the planning. Yeah, no, we try to be like transparent, not, with, uh, not only with price, but with like where your coffee is all the time. You can like always ask and always have visibility of that. Mm. Uh, and Hannah, is one thing that I wanted to ask you as well is so because we had a comment here from Dave Stanton that said he just made his uh, first purchase through uh, Algrano. So thanks, Dave. To help you, we're happy to have you on board. Um, but he's saying that uh, he paid a little bit more uh, because he because he bought like a it was a first purchase. It was a small volume and stuff, and. Is usually a, is a bit more expensive than the uh, than he would normally pays for the quality, for that same quality that he buys. Uh, do you see how do you see that? So like we have usually what we see from roasters is that they start buying a small quality, uh, uh, like a not a small quality, a small uh, volume. Uh, they usually pay a bit more because the volume is low and then they start increasing that volume over the years. They start buying a bit earlier. They can negotiate the price a bit better. Usually they get they can get better prices as well. Do you think that there's space for that? Is that your experience as well? Yeah, I mean, um, pricing is normally something that, uh, as you say, comes with uh, then volumes, long-term relationship, but obviously uh, what things happen also in, at the world market or currently with the frost in Brazil, I think this year, like uh, APA has easily lost 15 to 20% of the trees and the harvest. And when I chatted to Adi Milson he's, and I asked him, what, what, what can we do from our side? Then he said, basically, yeah, continue the relationship. And now this year, probably the coffee is also 20% more expensive. Will I still buy the coffee? Of course, because we want to continue the relationship. And that's, I think, the normal thing that you have in the relationship. You have good years. Last year was a high yield uh, um, um, uh, harvest in Brazil so the coffee price was a bit cheaper last year this year is more expensive that's I think normal in the relationship and that's what I think is yeah makes makes sense or what you want to create in a long-term relationship so yeah in the first with the first purchase maybe you, you um, pay a bit more but then this is something I think that pays off for you for you as company for I mean the values that you have as company or even how you want to use it for marketing what whatever yeah there's different reasons why <clears throat> you want to use this for 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 the roastery so uh, certainly I think that makes is something that is with normal when you start but then will develop over the years right um yeah so I I loved seeing that comment from Dave I'm so happy that that he chimed in with um, with his impression of his experience, um, and of course, you know the other piece of tools that's so important. I think is really understanding, you know, how does this sort of link happen from sourcing into production, and you know how are you you know planning your your sourcing needs based on your current production volumes? You know, this is a grab right from Cropster. Um, showing our tool for um, taking a look at and diving into green inventory. So Hannes, can you talk a little bit about your yeah. sort of points? That's, yeah, yeah. There, I pulled, we pulled two slides here. This one is from Cropster specifically. I really like, uh, I mean, both of you did in, in, uh, inventions over this. Yeah, what, one feature that I really liked about Cropster when it came up, I think two years ago or something, uh, I didn't really realize the, the benefit in the beginning, but uh, the, the fact that you have to, patients now so really all the coffees uh, when i know they are afloat or close to land then i, I add them to cropster and put them in the, the different warehouse that we and then when we um, place a release from the rare warehouse then afterwards we can just swap the coffee uh, from the warehouse to the roastery so that makes the inventory super easy earlier days i always needed to type manually the new weight so you have to sit there with your calculator almost and that has become super easy now. The previous slide was like a, a release to play, uh, to um, uh, release coffee at Algano, which is, has improved also a lot, I think, over the years, because initially you had to pick each coffee. Now I can create uh, mixed pellets as a roaster, you know, six packs of this, six, uh, four of this, so that the warehouse can compile the pellets. So this was very, at uh, its time, was time consuming in the beginning. Now it's super easy. So that's why I pulled out 
these two things, how to manage your um, inventory from the walls. And ideally one day this even, like that's still uh, the vision yeah, that we're talking about with technology. When I want to tick the volume, uh, the crop store warehouse or whatsoever that it automatically leads to my order at Algano. Yeah, that's that's the dream to come true, right? It's like we're, yeah. we're for the, everybody that's watching, this is really, you know, for I think El Grano and Cropster, this is also we're kind of in this discovery phase of of seeing where there might be some alignment and some ways that we could interface. Um, yeah. It hasn't happened yet. They're two distinct platforms. No, but I mean, uh, already in the past five, six years, yeah, when I when, when I managed the roastery, I, I, I have I, I've been able to remove lots of Excel sheets, you know, just by yeah. the additional uh, additional tools that we have. I still have the one like I'm still also hoping for a connection from the um, Green Coffee Sourcing Planner that you uh, described earlier to the uh, production planner from Cropstar. That's also something that's there. I still need my Excel. I think every roaster has his individually self-made up Excel, but this is something that's also perfect yeah. at some point. My, my, personal, my personal dream is to connect the sample feedback stuff as well, like the, yeah, the features. I think that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But who knows, next year. <laughs> yeah, right. And and I mean, and we're, and we're getting closer. I think, you know, Cropster has an origin product now that makes like entering sample data more seamless. Right on the other side, we have Cropster order to roast and even e-commerce, which can integrate like a WooCommerce or a Shopify store directly into a production plan. So as those coffees are roasted, it depletes the green inventory. And as predictive tools get better, you, um, you know, already we can, we can sort of draw a line and and help roasters anticipate when their inventory might run out. So um, yeah, yeah, in Germany actually, it's also quite nice that I can use all the data for uh, the coffee text uh, roast protocols. So that's super easy with Cropstar also. There I use it for and for our monthly inventory. You know, for our accounting, it's also right. done very easily. <clears throat> no, that's that's great to hear. Um, because yeah, I think you all you know kind of going on with some of your commitments, um, this idea of transparency and how you've grown from kind of initially just Ethiopia now to sourcing from all of these, these origins, um, not easy to, not easy to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, the more origins you have, the more relationship, the more uh, relationship management it is also in a way. So it's much more um, um, time consuming, but it's one of the, the best bits also about my job uh, to say. So it's really fun to be in touch, to be updated uh, from a days to visit the farmers. But nowadays it's more on, I don't know, WhatsApp conversations or uh, sometimes video calls. But yeah, this slide, um, I have taught a lot, a lot about it earlier. So about the project that we were on, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was great. Like one one of my favorite project was also where we installed washing station and now the coffee is in, in the warehouse, in Cropster in the roastery and we're selling it to customers. So we're trying to, you know, make the, the circle, the coffee circle, like um, support an origin and bring the coffee to the end consumers. And <clears throat> yeah, here we use the term direct trade. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. It's, it's, I, I'm also more a fan of direct sourcing. Um, yeah, the more relationship you have, the more fun it is, but the more complicated it is. Uh, that's why tools like the origin planner and, and things like this are really um, supportive. And what I really also think is one thing about the criteria, one thing about sourcing is, is you can uh, yeah, create lots of discussions about it. One thing that I really think see in reality is also that uh, you have to have a certain set of values yeah and if you attach to that values i think then even if you're a little bit flexible you know when it comes to and kenyan coffees and there's very little organic grown coffees then you also have to respect the local situation in the market so when we set up initially the criteria it's still the starting point when we go to a new origin but obviously you have to see for every country again we try to support smallholder farmers so whenever possible we buy from cooperatives we have a strong focus there because we want to create an impact and uh yeah by at least normally also a container something that we can buy not everywhere but um and i think that's that's when um yeah uh, 
is a good good where you can have yeah, a good impact. Yeah. And, you know, and with these commitments to transparency and you have your transparency report, um, you know, as a B Corp, you know, the logos here, how does, a, you know, how are you using Cropster? How are you using El Grotto? How does that make your life maybe easier? I mean, do you, do you use those tools to mine data to sort of prove these commitments that you're making, both to your customers, but also to a certifier? Um, I mean, we're using uh, data, lots of data, yeah, obviously from Cropster also. I th I'm, I'm thinking one thing is the, the quality control that we mentioned earlier or sensory feedback. Uh, uh, we started last year to really use Cropster uh, sensory se cupping session, set it up for quality control. Mm. So we target more or less 10% of all the, the batches that we roast to have it in a, in a quality control manner. So we created our own, our own sheet actually, that's a bit easier to run through to look for consistency and roast um, possible roast defects. Uh, so obviously also we have all the all the roast uh, protocols. So whenever we get a customer question about, you know, we, I, I bought this coffee, it was roasted on that day, somehow it tastes different. So we can easily go back to the curves first thing, and then maybe we've had it in quality control, that's even better. So we can refer back to that. And then um, all the green coffee samples, we also add now to cropping se sessions on Cropster and uh, give feedback afterwards really to, to producers or to the exporters or whoever sent the, the, the samples. Because I think that's also something there where you can really yeah, create something over the years of time. As I said earlier with the APAS example where they created one specific blend only for us. Yeah. I think that's really important because you have to respect that lots of uh, work has been behind the sample of green coffees and then people send it to you from somewhere pay uh, some dhl fee for it for whatsoever so it's really like at least the respect is to give back the feedback and ideally yeah to get to know each other and then find the sweet spot where you can create yeah. the contents yeah and we'll look at some examples of how that what that looks like um from our platforms but it's i think you know that that commitment that you all have to building relationships and how you even sort of consider your coffee purchases based on what kind of relationship they are is, is really powerful and it speaks to that respect as well. Yeah, so yeah, we have, this is internal data that we use and sometimes if we have the enough capacity then we publish this at, at, as a transparency report. We have uh, clustered into different types of relationships. Like it's still also like uh, always uh, lots of discussion about how to cluster, but we put more or less the model uh, group where you have like the long lasting relationships or we, where we even have projects together with the farmers. So uh, the biggest share, then we have relationship with exporters so that we continuously buy from certain ex exporters, but not necessarily from the same uh, cooperative because also we're looking yeah, into certain quality that we want for certain um, um, end products. Uh, then we have uh, <clears throat> the existing relationship, but where sometimes we buy the coffee um, also spot because already like we're using multiple um, um, importers or traders. Uh, and then sometimes like they buy the same coffee as us. So in, in, instead of setting up a contract in origin, I take some amounts of the, the spot position from the trader. Then we have uh, new relationships that we also like looking for normally um, by doing trips. I think uh, due to Corona, probably uh, Agano is really a great uh, starting point. Yeah, if you want to create new relationships because they already have lots of cool sessions uh, about it. And then sometimes even like we have to buy um, spot coffees. Uh, it was a bit bigger actually the share last year, but still like then at least it should be traceable so according to our principles, uh, because yeah, due to the mess up in some shipments last year with uh, delays and whatsoever, the share of spot coffee that we had to buy was also a little bit bigger. Right. So that's how we clustered it for us. Mm. Uh, great. And then, yeah, I mean, and this kind of comes full circle to what Louisa was talking about earlier, right? Is like mistakes happen, things are delayed, like, you know, for you to... to to sit where you are worrying about coffee on the water is probably not the best use of your time and stress when there's a partner like El Grano. 
that can take care of that for you, can take care of the uh, of the headache. So I guess it, it was interesting that uh, so coffee circle is quite what well, quite big now. You can get you guys can get um, good volumes and ship on dedicated containers. Um, and you were a bit averse to um, to consolidations in the beginning, I suppose, like sharing shipments with other roasters because of this uh, potential headache that you can have. So, like Algrano's a bit Algrano's expertise in a way is, is precisely that. So, like we're experts in shared shipments. So we pull like orders from dozens of roasters, uh, from uh, dozens of producers in the same container, and we somehow make that happen. There are uh, so many emails exchanged and so many WhatsApp messages exchanged. Uh, but the idea is that by facilitating that we can make direct sourcing or like say direct trade more scalable and more democratic for uh, for roasters. Okay. Uh, we, we have another comment that um, in, in the Q&A that's just someone who really likes the ecosystem. Um, Mattia is just talking about taking advantage of Algrano's logistics um, and how smooth and easy the transactions were. So Mattia, thanks for sharing that experience, um, both with new uh, and yeah. No, and we work both ways as well. So when uh, if a roaster doesn't have a relationship at origin, uh, doesn't know a producer yet, he goes through the marketplace and he can uh, start talking to a producer, cup some samples, see what he likes, see what he doesn't. Uh, and then if, uh, if they already know a producer, they have a relationship, they have some experience with the origin, uh, they can put us in touch with a producer, say, I want this coffee, this is the price, this is how much I want uh, imported from it. And, and then we'll just say, okay, well, we can do it at this date, we can do this FCA price, etc." cetera. And, and, in the coffee shit so we do both like online and offline uh orders as well which i think for for um this is quite interesting uh it gives them a lot of freedom to choose who they're going to source from it gives them a lot of control and uh i think normally like traders can do that kind of service as well but it's a bit less straightforward sometimes it's like oh there's no space in the container or uh, I don't want the producer to be uh, like a competition, be in competition with me selling directly. So it's a bit less uh, less usual to find that service from, from traders. And for, for us, it's kind of like our default. We can always do that every time. Right. And, and yeah, and, you know, just as we're kind of approaching the end and some of these topics we've already covered, um, but like Hannes mentioned, the importance of sharing that, that feedback to producers and you know, here's just a, a couple of views of what that looks like within Algrano and within Cropster. You can generate full PDFs and just attach them to emails of cupping sessions with detailed scores and results or summary scores. This is sort of more, more involved. Um, but I, I think that's just so important. It's, um, it's respectful, as Hannah said. I think it also just makes the relationship stronger, whether that relationship is with a supplier directly, whether that's the relationship as Louisa was talking about, um, where Belgrano is playing this matchmaker role and somebody has found a relationship and, and are looking for specific profiles within the coffee, you know, share those results and use those tools that are there so that either the producer can really key into what your interests are, or if you're working with Belgrano and using the platform, again, you can be sort of directed to the most appropriate coffees for your needs. No, and the idea, the idea as well, I guess, you start a relationship, you don't, you don't have a lot of experience with it, you start sharing feedback. Second year, third year, the producer really knows you, like with Hannes, like Alessandro knew what he liked already, he could design a blend for him. It's like, you can start talking about coffees that are like, that are never gonna be in any offer list. So if you want exclusive coffees, if you want coffees that are unique to you and other roasters are not selling, that's the only way of getting it. So like if you have to have a good relationship with a producer, he will send you exactly what you want. Like they, they will know your taste and they'll be able to send you like very tailored uh, samples. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, that ultimately like it all sort of comes together. It's, you know, it's, it's having the right tools 
in order to tie your sourcing to your current inventory, your current operational needs, and how quality relates to all of this. So, um, Johannes, it was great seeing this um, this sort of production quality snapshot from yeah. directly from your Cropster account. Can you speak to this just for a moment as we as we sort of head into the home stretch here? Uh, yeah, exactly. So this is a, a screenshot I pulled the other day. So. Um, yeah, you see the consistency cupping that we set up in, in, in sessions here, and it's we've been struggling quite a bit over over the years to find a perfect system for that, and had our own Excel sheet whatsoever in the beginning. But uh, ever since we used Cropster, it made things much more smoother. And uh, yeah, it's very easy to look up whoever is there. You know, if the guy, if if someone is on vacation whatsoever, we can go into in, into Cropster, look up the notes when we have customer uh, questions or want to look something up for ourselves. Uh, we, we, I think it's also really good to store uh, the feedback on offer samples, pre-shipment samples whatsoever, because when the coffee then arrives a few months later, you know, I'm very like I somehow I can save memories about tasting coffees a long time, but you know, in a team, someone didn't know at that time what the coffee was for whatsoever, then it's still, everyone can still up, uh, look up the notes, what we liked or not liked about the coffee. So that's really something great for operations quality. Yeah, and you can tie that specific issue maybe back, right? To that <clears> specific <throat> lot that was delivered in that specific shipment versus maybe a later delivery from that same producer that, that was slightly different. Yeah, um, yeah I, I really liked seeing your production cupping form. It's, um, it's so simple, it's so quick, but also just for that kind of quick pass fail cupping, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. so we give four points. I don't know if you see that, but it's, it's very easy. So you can really you know put 20 coffees on the table and then go through. So that only makes it handle the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. it actually it's also really fun. I, I realized since ever since we don't cup together anymore, you know, sometimes if we have like very important cuppings, three people cupping the coffees, and then afterwards you have all the scores coming together, and then if you then find the one coffee that all of us like the best, that's great moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That makes yeah, me it's so powerful, and um, you know, and maybe another chance for um for some future collaboration with Belgrano, right? Is being able to somehow aggregate some of this data, um, back into the the feedback exactly. in the platform. It's dreams can always happen, um. And of course, you know, with Cropster particularly, we're also working at Origin. You know, we're providing additional tools to sort of help with some of the more technical and logistic steps. You know, this is an ambient sensor which can measure the environmental conditions wherever coffee is being stored. In this case, it's like parchment and reposo, but it could e just as easily be green coffee in a warehouse or roasted coffee waiting to be bagged. Um, and tying all of that together and all of that data is so, so tricky and important. Um, and then ah, there's, there's your pass fail test on us on, on the, the screenshot here of your yeah. production cupping. I just set up in my own account with your sheet, just two examples yeah. of a simple. Okay, yeah, yeah. Of a, of a, a fake coffees, test roasts and Acme test lot, but. Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh -huh. That's great. So as, as we wrap up, you know, I just wanna give the platform to both of you for any um, sort of last comments that you don't feel like we covered. and. Um, and also if there's any last questions from our attendees, I guess just before that, there's been a lot of um, questions coming in from producers, um, wondering about trade in Uganda, wondering about how um, someone in Indonesia can get involved with the platform. Um, I guess my best answer for that is stay tuned because this is part one of a series of webinars and the next one is gonna be much more focused on Cropster and Algrano from the perspective of a producer. So for those questions, um, that's come back and see us next time. <laughs> no, but I want to say that from producers that, that so they're asking about how they can build relationships. So Algreno does Algreno verifies all the producers that make offers on the platform. So to to give to give the roasters that kind of like trust that they're sourcing from 
uh, trustworthy suppliers in producing countries. We always have like a lot of meetings. Ideally, we visit people uh, like we haven't been visiting during the pandemic, but we'll visit people, see the installation, see how they work, come together, calibrate all that, and then that's how the uh, how we open the door. Um, for for relationships and Uganda is something that we're working on now as well so that should start happening soon uh, please get in touch uh, if you want to uh, talk more about that as well and and yeah and from Cropster's standpoint at, at origin it's um you know anybody can sign up and and basically get a trial for a Cropster origin account if you're producing coffee or exporting coffee um, and what Cropster will do is it'll give you a platform where you can really track your production from the time cherries are delivered through multiple processing methods and processing steps. It can be a tool to help you understand better your business and your yields and all of those details that are so important on the farm. Um, and while I don't know for sure, I think um, having that data sort of readily at your fingertips probably makes um, the discussions with somebody like Anas or somebody like Louisa much more straightforward as you look forward to building these relationships and either coming on board with platforms or um, or building a relationship directly with a with a roaster. And I guess what I would like to say as well uh, to kind of like wrap up is just with the right tools, I guess direct sourcing directly from producing countries is very easy, is very chilled out. You might have a few a few issues on the way, but it's like there's a lot of people uh, there to give you a hand and to help you sort things out. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a very fun experience as well. You can uh, find coffees that really like um, uh, have meaning for, uh, have meaning to use. Not coffees that you like you chose from a, from an offer list and are a bit faceless. So it's not like buying from a supermarket necessarily. Uh, it, ha it has it has like a bit more of a of meaning to roasters and a lot of a lot of roasters ask us it's like also oh, how can how can i have an impact at the origin so i'm not buying a full container i'm not going to uh, represent any impacts uh, i'm not going to make any difference for uh, for a small holder or for uh, for a single farm and i was just talking to um, to a farmer in brazil um, a couple of days ago and it's not a big farm in brazil it's a relatively small farm in brazil it produces kind of like a thousand uh, bags a year so that's quite small for brazil and so you're saying like last year he sold five percent of his crop uh for international buyers a lot of them for grano but like small sales five 15 20 bags wow. and he said that five percent sales in that market allow him to uh, up his revenue of the year for the entire farm in 15 and so he's like, I see a lot of potential in this. So like, I can improve my revenue if I if I bump a little bit, like the amount of coffee that I sell that I export. Uh, I can I can have a lot more revenue for my farm. It's very significant for me. So I guess like we tend to look at impact from a very individual perspective, but if we look from a collective perspective, I think like there's a lot of potential for even small roasters to uh, to do that and to uh, to be able to uh, feel good about about the coffees that they're buying, about the sourcing models that they that they are adopting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think yeah, through all of this, what, what you just said is so powerful to me because yeah, on the one hand impact, you know, if you're working on a PhD in sustainability impact is often so driven by like big data and big data sets and having baseline reports and things. But also like at the end of the day, it's so important to marry um, the kind of personal and the anecdotal. And that could be, you know, showing how cupping scores improve year to year and how the payments, you know, that you made to a producer and the purchases you made increased from a roaster's perspective. And and I love that. And I think, um, you know, I know part of what I love about Cropster is that it enables that that sort of personal, more granular information and stories to come through. And clearly, El Grano is doing the same thing. Great. Well, this has been a really fun session for me. Um, Hannes, do you have anything, any parting words to leave us with before we say farewell to everybody? Yeah, thank you. I really liked the session as well. So um, yeah, coming back to uh, simplifying 
direct trade. I think uh, there has been like lots of improvement of the, over the last years, also on the, your platforms, guys. You did a great job. I th still think there's room for improvement. So, uh, so we. so, we're on the way, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to, to see the next changes. Sometimes I'm, I'm in touch with you also when it comes to development. Um, I'm very happy to work with you because you're also seeking feedback, and uh, it has been very helpful for us as well. And yeah, I can um, yeah just say it is has been fun direct sourcing. I mean, it's really something nice. So if you I have the direct connection and to, um, to the coffee. Yeah, you know, the roasting makes also more fun then actually. So, yeah, I can yeah. just. I'll, I'll just leave us with one story. Which, oh, yeah, I'll just with one little story about how direct sourcing makes things more fun. Yesterday, Hannes and I were talking. He was talking about a coffee that he was drinking from Colombia, from Cafe Granja La Esperanza which was a coffee I competed with in a Brewers' Cup competition many, many years ago. And, mm. you know, just like, because we both have this direct, this relationship there, um, it was just, it's so satisfying. It's like, now I feel like you and I know each other better as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, really cool. Um, but thanks everybody. This has been recorded. So we will have this posted on our, um, um, on our social media with links and things, you can also navigate it from to it from our YouTube and our websites um, to catch up with anything that you didn't catch the first time around or joined us late. So, but mainly thank you, Hannes, Coffee Circle, Louisa, El Grano. I look forward to our next session sometime uh, soon. Likewise, let's let's talk some producers as well. Have a great day, Marcus, Hannes. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye.